my third year here at Waters Garden Center. Uh, some of you know me pretty well. Uh, some of you are just new to the area, and uh, this might be your first class, so welcome. Um, one of the uh, things that tends to come up a lot in late winter, early spring, and even in fall time, uh, when, whenever the subject of vegetables comes up, everyone seems to be surprised. It's, uh, oh, but I thought you couldn't plant until Mother's Day. And actually, there's two other growing seasons besides uh, the May plantings. So there's actually a, you know, a lot of vegetables. Most of them are not actually up here on the table yet. Um, more are, are coming in, and there's even more available uh, by seed. So we're going to talk about some of the things that you're going to be doing during the cooler seasons. Actually, if you really get into this, you can be planting or harvesting in both just about every month of the year. If you really want to, this, this is actually something that can go all, all the time. So we're going to talk about some of the varieties and when to plant and, and uh, how to care for them and, and when to expect a harvest. Um, the nice thing about the cool season vegetables is that for the most part, uh, they're actually really easy. So if you're a beginning gardener, or if you just don't have a lot of time for vegetable gardening, or don't want to put in a lot of expense, you'll find that the cool season vegetables are much easier to work with. Um, the, the summer vegetables, you, you start getting into all kinds of complications, uh, you know, pollinization, and male flowers and female flowers, and does the plant have this, and does the plant have that, or are we getting enough calcium, are we getting enough this, are we getting enough that? You don't run into that nearly as much with your cool season vegetables. Another thing that's really nice about them, they don't take up a lot of space. Many of us, myself included, we just don't have space for those summer vegetables. There's giant squash and pumpkin plants, enormous tomato plants, we just don't have space. You can cut these things just about anywhere. You can tuck them in the pots, any place where you have a bare space, any place where maybe a, a plant uh, has died and now you just got a little bare spot in between everything else. Uh, maybe uh, one of the summer vegetables didn't make it or maybe you've harvested it already and it's ready, you're ready to rip that out. You can plug a little broccoli or cabbage or chard or just about anything in there and, and be harvesting in the, in the cool season. Like I said, I don't have a lot of space at the place I'm in just at this moment. I don't have this big yard, so I can't do most of those, you know, big squashes and pumpkins and, uh, you know, things like that. Sometimes I'll do miniature melons, some miniature squash, but that's, I'll, I'll do some of the tomatoes, but I, I just can't do as much with the summer vegetables. I have no problem at all plugging in a whole bunch of carrots and broccoli, and believe me, I eat a lot of broccoli. I, I love broccoli, so anywhere I can find a place to stick a broccoli plant, I'll do it. <laughs> so. And they're just so easy to work with. So um, we're going to start with uh, uh, some of the leafy vegetables. Those are going to be some of the first that you're going to be harvesting. We've got some chard up here. We've got lettuces. Um, so that's more chard. They actually come in a lot of different colors. They're really pretty. Uh, you can make some very nice little um, pots and, and beds. They're actually really pretty ones with the cool season vegetables. They're a lot of fun to work with. We actually do a class usually in the spring where uh, uh, we'll actually put a, uh, I have a class where we make what we call salad bowls where they'll take a pot and just start setting, picking out a bunch of vegetables and edible flowers such as pansies. It's a kind of, kind of a, usually a tangy kind of uh, uh, a taste or sometimes a minty flavor. Uh, so the pansies and violas are actually pretty edible and uh, go good in salads or things like that. Give it just a little bit of zest. And so uh, we'll, we'll pick out different vegetables and stick them into a pot. We'll, by the time we're done, we end up with these really pretty little uh, salad bowls. And so it, if any of you are interested, you know, come back in the spring, we'll have that salad bowl class. And you get to pot up your own right here at the garden center. And uh, so keep an eye on it at, at the class schedule. Um, stick some herbs in there. I love putting herbs with vegetables, especially earlier in the season. It's still pretty hot right now. It's August. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she, she's right. A lot of herbs don't like a lot of water. So if you're sticking them in with uh, vegetables that need a little more, you got to be careful. Um, actually, a lot of vegetables, um, 
and don't really need a whole lot of water. So as long as the pot is big enough so that it's not drying out real bad, um, you can actually they'll get along just fine. Uh, so sometimes you have to watch out for those things. Um, but actually, there's a lot that can get along. And, and we'll kind of go into that. But yeah, I love putting in um, herbs with my, my vegetables because they uh, help repel insects. Right now, it's still pretty hot. A lot of insects are, are active. We're kind of at the tail end of our monsoon season, kind of humid. So a lot of, a lot of bugs are still active. Uh, the nice thing, another nice thing, I should say, about food season vegetables, they don't have the bug problems that the summer vegetables get. You don't end up with cucumber beetles and spittle bugs and squash bugs and every other kind of bug you can imagine. I mean, there's so many of them, bean beetles, you know, so many of them that are active during the summer. They're starting to go dormant in that cool season. So you don't have the bug problems. So we don't have to deal with those as much. Um, but uh, we, we uh, for just this earlier part of the season when we're getting started in fall planting, it's not a bad idea have a few things together like that. And then you're all set and ready to go and you have a, a lot of things together. So that's why we do the, the salad bowls in the springtime. Uh, everybody's kind of got spring fever. Everybody's feeling like uh, planting vegetables and flowers. So um, that, that class is, always gets a really good turnout in the spring. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, leafy vegetables, like our chars, lettuces, cap head lettuce, leaf lettuce, butterhead, all these different kinds of lettuces. Uh, cabbages. Um, uh, the cabbages are, are going to take a little bit longer because they've got to form a head. But with these leaf vegetables, uh, you actually just you just need a little bit of time, maybe uh, you know, six weeks, sometimes only three or four weeks, depending on what kind of uh, uh, vegetables we're talking about. And so the leaf lettuces, the spinach, the collards, the chars, um, you, you know, pretty soon they're they're ready to go. If you even if you plant within weeks you're already harvesting. And uh, really easy, all you have to do is clip off the leaves, put them in your salad, and it grows back more leaves. So every time you clip off more, they, they just keep growing back. So it's a continuous harvest with your leaf vegetables. Very fast growing and, and continuous harvest just makes them an excellent, uh, makes them excellent cats. And goes for your kales. Uh, we have any kale yet? No, we don't. Um, and so with these, you just clip and just eat as you go. Really easy. You don't really have a lot of problems with, with insects. Every now and then they might get, some of them might get aphids. I, I just, I've found that they really don't have a lot of problems with them. Especially some of these dark leaf varieties. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's just me. But in my garden, they, they don't seem to care for the darker leaves like the, the reds. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, and we have some, this is romaine here. Is that romaine? Or is that the, that's, a, that's a lettuce. Uh, lettuce. I had some romaine that looked just like this. I thought I did. Anyway, um, so here we have the, um, <laughs> anyway, with the, the leaf lettuce, like I said, you just clip as you go. With the head lettuce, you'll wait a little bit longer. Uh, and then um, you're usually looking at two to three months for most of your head lettuce and uh, your cabbages. You're probably looking at uh, maybe a little closer to three to And how long it takes for them to reach maturity uh, to be ready for harvest. Um, I don't have any of the regular eating cabbage with me right now. This is an ornamental cabbage. You can eat this. But its flavor isn't quite as sweet and crisp as uh, the kind of cabbages we normally use for eating. But I brought this up here just for you to get a look at it, what they start out as. Um, most of your eating cabbages will form a nice tight head. Um, the ornamental cabbages are a little bit looser. Um, kind, of, kind of makes them a little more leathery leaf instead of being crisp. Um, but you're looking at, a, like I said, maybe, maybe two, three months, and you'll be harvesting a whole head when you're talking about your uh, uh, head lettuces and cabbages. Um, with some of them, they might be a little bit longer. Um, I don't have any broccoli up here yet, but the broccoli and the uh, cauliflowers. Uh, again, you're looking at um, about 
two and a half months, sometimes only about one and a half, depending on the variety uh, that you've got. Uh, so basically, the, we have kind of, a, kind of two different categories with all these green vegetables. You've got uh, your cold crops, the cruciferous vegetables, those, those are your cabbage family. Right? That's cabbage, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, um, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, you know, all of these different uh, kale, thank you. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ones in this family. These, uh, this family, the cabbage family, very, very, very cold hardy. Normally when you have to plant vegetables, you have to think about when your, your first fall frost is going to be and when your last uh, spring frost is going to be so that you can skip those frosts. You don't have to worry about that with these um, with the cabbage family uh, because they can they can take uh, even a light freeze. Like they can actually survive hard freezes. They just stop growing, and you won't get any development down. And that's the only, only problem with hard freezes. They're actually extremely cold hardy. And uh, the old time farmers swear by this. They say you got to have a frost or or a few to really sweeten up the uh, the broccolis and the kales and the cabbages. Um, so they, they, they're so easy to grow at this point. You can seed them in, um, and then, you know, you don't have to worry again about that first fall frost. And so they're, they're going to be harvesting in October, November. A lot of it's going to, you know, you're going to be harvesting a lot in November with these types of vegetables. Of course, some of them will be ready sooner than that, uh, you know, like your kales. But those, again, are continuous harvests. Continue to harvest through November. Like I said, as soon as December hits, it is hard freezes. They just stop growing. Uh, with the broccoli and cauliflower, uh, what I notice is that uh, if you let it go all the way into a hard freeze, uh, into like long, real cold hard freezes, December, January, the last what happens is stop growing. They'll just sit there and do nothing. And if they're not fully developed, you they go out and leave it there. Start growing again when it gets warm. And it warms up and they get kind of laggy. They start growing again, they get laggy and odd looking. They don't have a nice big compact head anymore. So somehow they just lose their momentum uh, when they try to go through that hard freeze. So with the cauliflower and broccoli, just be careful with that. Try to get them harvested before the, you know, that December, uh, late, especially late December time. Other than that, again, this family is very, very cold hardy. Be losing things. So some people you will come in and they've been harvesting from the same kale from past year. <laughs> no problem. They've got the stuff they find the last fall, they're still harvesting. Uh, usually the problem with trying to get a kale uh, through summertime is that they, they get bitter, they start to bolt, uh, get laggy, and then you, know, you just give up on it. You get rid of it. But in some cases, some people will get it through the summer. So they actually will keep harvesting on the same plant. For most of us, though, uh, we're going to plant in fall, plant in spring, and um, you know, we won't have uh, any of that issue. Yes? So, the planting, do they eat full sun or are they better in shade? The question was, are they better in full sun or are they better in shade? Um, you can put them in full sun. Uh, they, they do need good light to develop correctly and uh, to develop uh, good big heads on the broccolis and uh, cauliflowers, they do need good light. It doesn't necessarily have to be dawn to dusk. Uh, so as long as they get some hours of, of good light, of, of direct or very bright light, I've actually grown broccoli and, and kale and stuff in um, very bright indirect light all day. And they got little to no direct light. They actually did okay. So uh, they're very versatile. Very versatile. Um, yes. Yes, right now is fall planting. Some of these things you could have started putting in by seed in July, even that early, and then uh, you'll start going through um, some things like your root vegetables and uh, some of your broccolis and, and things. You can actually do successive sowing. That's where you put some in in July and put some in at the beginning of August and basically sow every three weeks. Every three to four weeks, you're going to put down some more. That way, you have a continuous harvest for these things that you only harvest once. Or if you see, right 
Um, you can use seeds, or we do have some starts in. More starts will be coming in. Um, like I said, the best varieties will be coming from seeds. Uh, there, you know, we'll get cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and starch, but uh, we might have a little bit of, maybe a little bit of collard. We'll have plenty of kale, uh, but you might not see as much you know, mustards and you know, some of the uh, more unusual varieties. Uh, the fall, um, it, it's not our, our busiest season for vegetables. It should be, because this really is an excellent season for planting your cold crops. See, it starts off kind of warm, which kind of helps things germinate and get started and they grow real quickly, but then it cools off before they really become heat sensitive, before they can start getting to that age where they're just and not doing anything. Yes? No, that's the nice thing about it. You can kind of skip. Uh, she was asking if we're starting from seed, do we need to start? We can skip that part where we uh, start indoors. Um, actually, a lot of the seeds, they will still germinate in cool season. Um, some of them won't germinate when it's hot, if it's too hot. Uh, you know, some of the lettuces won't do it. Really, the, the earliest you could possibly hope to seed lettuce is probably July, August. It just, if it's too hot, they don't want to come up at all. Um, but you can do, um, you know, if, if you're starting in spring, you can start, you can sow directly into the ground, but it's pretty cold. But here, our winters are very, um, uh, what's the word, unpredictable. Sometimes they're frigid cold, and sometimes they're really mild. You know, last winter was very mild. A lot of people, they stuck seeds in February. And had no problem, and they were harvesting by summer. No problem. Uh, other winters will be so cold that it's difficult to, to really get things going. So it, it just depends on both the vegetable but also on the climate. So um, just a sec. Um, I was going to say something. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Carrots and radishes, are they cool weather? Yes. You can kind of get through much of the summer with them. It depends on how hot it's really getting. Um, they tend to be, our, our summers are very hot and dry. In some milder climates, you can plant all the way through summer, or sow some seed all the way through summer. But here are our summers, especially in that month of June, where it's just dry as a and the air has no moisture in it at whatsoever, and it gets real hot. And uh, you'll find the carrots, radishes, you know, all those root vegetables, they, they get kind of kind of woody. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess someone needs shaking his head like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can do them now. And by the time they really start to form, uh, you know, a, a big root, um, it won't be so hot and hard. Because otherwise, if it is hot, they, they do. They get kind of tough and fibery. And they're just no good for eating, and some of them will actually bolt and just stop growing, especially like the radishes. You know, they'll, they'll, bolting means uh, flowers. Uh, if you've ever seen something bolt, you know it right away. The, the plant gets really long and leggy, and really skimpy leaves, and, and it'll start to get little lovely flowers at the top, and then, and then after that it just stops growing and starts looping. It. Sometimes it just dies. So bolting is usually not a good thing with your vegetables of any kind, most of the time. Uh, so, with those root vegetables, uh, you, you don't want it to be bolting, and bolting typically happens when it gets real hot, and that goes through. Some people sometimes delay the bolting. If they see it starting to bolt, they'll go and clip it, and it delays it a little bit, but if it's really hot, then no, it's not gonna work. It's, it's determined to go. Yes. Yeah, there's lettuces is especially heat sensitive, especially like leaf lettuces and stuff. But even the, the like romaines and head lettuces, you know, as soon as it gets hot, you see some that get real tall and have a big stalk with small leaves all along. It doesn't look anything like a head. And uh, then you just finally see the flower at the top, and the whole thing just kind of dies off. And they're done. Yeah, if it's hot and it's bolting. There's no way to do that. So that goes for roots and for leaf vegetables alike. Yes. Yes, you can still eat them. Sometimes at that point they get bitter. Uh, you know, they're not quite as sweet and, and good tasting as they are when it's cooler. 
So yes, you can eat it, it's just not going to produce very well and it's not going to be as good. Yes, ma'am. Um, I planted lettuce in the end of June, uh -huh. um, and I've got one of those sun covers, you know, mm -hmm. that that so you probably went on that much lets longer. some of the sun in, but it, it really cuts back the heat, yeah. and it did great. The yeah. lettuce did great. Yeah, yeah, she she was saying that she had no problem harvesting her lettuce in the summer. She had a, a sunscreen, lets light in, but cuts down on the heat. And yes, you can extend your season. Every yard's a little different. If you are, say, you know, in these woody, woody areas of Prescott, I don't, I'm not sure where you are. I'm at Willow Hills. Okay. Some of the, some of the areas of Prescott, uh, you know, it's not nearly severe, but I know some of you are down like Prescott Valley and Dewey, <laughs> and it's a little more severe down there, so you'll have more trouble. But you know, some of us, depending on the circumstances in the yard and uh, how much shade the plant is getting, you might be able to pre prevent or at least delay the whole team, um, you know, for some time. Uh, so it, again, this is all, it all becomes environmental. Can you, can you delay the whole thing? Maybe, but it just depends on the circumstances. In your case, you were able to stop it. Were you harvesting all summer? Yes, you were. Okay, that's good. So it just depends. Like I said, I have actually gotten some summer vegetable, uh, some winter vegetables, uh, all the way through summer, doing the same thing, indirect light, right, but indirect light, and uh, actually continue to harvest. I actually, uh, I, had, I had a broccoli in last year, and um, I think I put it in the spring. And after, after I harvested the head, I didn't bother to take it out, and I continued to harvest the leaves. Uh, broccoli leaves are very, very nutritious. Remember, they're related to kale. So, uh, you know, you, you can harvest leaves. A lot of people think about the head and then throw away the rest of the plant, and what a waste. That stuff is really nutritious. The stems and leaves are really good for you. So after you harvest broccoli, you'll take off the head. It'll never form a head again. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, you'll see little florets coming up from time to time, but never a big head. Um, but it will continue to produce uh, leaves, so it'll stay alive. And the leaves are actually good for using for all kinds of things. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. What was the question? Okay. Soup. Yes, they're excellent in soup. Uh, sometimes I saute them. Sometimes I even stick them in sandwiches, you know, just a little bit. Um, they have a stronger flavor than lettuce, so I don't use as much. When I, when I put lettuce on a sandwich, I pile it high. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't put on quite as much of the, the broccoli leaves, but uh, I do. I, and I've kept that that broccoli for a, a good year until I finally just pulled it out and put more in so that I could get ahead again. Um, but I did. I, I was just taking leaves off all the time and it produced a, an abundance of leaves once the head was gone. All its energy went into that. The more I harvested, the leafier it got. So it was actually excellent to have. I, uh, I hadn't gotten my kales in, so I just used that instead. I was very happy with it. Not quite as crunchy as kale, but uh, still very good. Let's see. Um, so we we're talking about broccoli, kales, uh, leaf and stuff. We've got, um, what else have I covered? Oh, uh, we were kind of talking about uh, uh, the root vegetables. Um, there's actually a lot of root vegetables. You know, we think roots, and automatically the mind usually goes to carrots, fresh, and beets. Um, they're so versatile and, and uh, they're, they're delicious, but there's actually a lot more that you might even want to try. Some, some of the old-time uh, root vegetables have kind of gone to the wayside, and I'm not sure why. Uh, Bluebagas, uh, turnips, they're actually very versatile. You can put them into just about anything. Stick them in the crock pot. I love crock pot. Um, I do. Because by the time I get home, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't want to uh, stand in front of the stove and cook. I don't have time. <laughs> I'm hungry now. So I love putting stuff in the crock pot before I leave. And uh, so first thing in the morning, pull out the crock pot and I just stick in whatever meat was on sale, you know, and stick in uh, whatever vegetables were, were ready and all sticking carrots and turnips and rutabagas and whatever. Whatever's in there. Yes? What about potatoes? Potatoes? Um, potatoes are going to plant in February. Um, so if you come in February or give us a call, uh, and, and see if they're in yet, because I can't give an exact date. But sometime in February, potatoes will arrive, the seed potatoes. Uh, a lot of people are going to ask me, 
what's the difference between the seed potatoes we sell here and the potatoes you find at the store? It's just a potato, right? The ones at the store have been sprayed with um, an anti-sprouting agent. I can't tell you. They, they sometimes they do still sprout, but this anti-sprouting agent is de designed to uh, stop or stunt that sprouting. So every now and then, if you have a potato in your fridge or in your uh, pantry that's been there long enough, you know, you'll start seeing them grow, but they won't do as well, and they won't have the uh, percentage of success as the seed potatoes. Uh, so that anti-sprouting agent is um, designed to prevent them from doing that, or at least delay it, and then stunt it when it starts. So um, <laughs> the best thing to do if you want to plant potatoes is get seed potatoes. That means they have not been sprayed with an anti-sprouting agent. And, uh, put those into the ground, chop them up, uh, have, chop, chop them up into pieces, and uh, each piece should have one or two eyes, yes. Uh, uh, each, each piece should have at least one or two eyes on it, and uh, each of those pieces will grow out more potatoes. So if you, if you put the whole potato in there, I mean, you, you'll still get a plant, but you'll get a lot more out of it if you chop it up. So put them in, and um, Chop them up, leave them out to dry a little bit so that the cut edges kind of dry out a little bit, yeah, and then go ahead and plant them. <coughs> yes. Um, the question is, can we do sweet potatoes here? No. They require a very long, warm growing season. We do not have it here in the mountains. Um, we can do it in Phoenix, um, but we can't do it in here. If I get that question a lot, yes. Um, it would be best if you did not. Um, and the reason why she, the, the question was, can you eat the um, the, the leaves of the potato? Uh, it's a nightshade vegetable. Uh, so nightshade vegetables, you're not supposed to eat any of the green parts. Uh, that's why in the old days they, they would often actually take the eyes out just to be safe and I've never known the eyes to be toxic enough to actually cause a problem and most people don't bother these days but it, when they be, first became aware of it they would actually carve out the eyes of the potatoes before cooking them. Uh, I remember when we were kids we, we would do that. We don't really do that in my mom though. But. So does that mean sweet potato is different? It's not a nightshade or is that just a um, I do think sweet potato is in the nightshade family but um, Cattlemen actually do consider it a noxious weed, um, but how much of it is actually dangerous, I don't know. Um, I did not know that it was used in Chinese cooking. Um, I just found that out. <laughs> so as the, I don't know much about eating sweet potato meat, but uh, I know with potatoes, as being a nightshade vegetable, you can eat the roots. Um, same with tomatoes. Tomatoes are nightshade, so you're not, don't be eating like the leaves and everything. Uh, but you only eat the fruit, say with eggplant, that's another nightshade. And you only eat the fruit. Um, it's actually recommended even that you take the skin off the eggplant uh, because there's a little more of the toxin in the skin. Most of us don't eat eggplant that often to really worry about it. But for people who eat it more often, they actually recommend that you take the skin off because it's a nightshade. Yes, ma'am. Okay, how do you know when to empty the buckets of potatoes? And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, it's kind of hard to tell until you dig them up, right? So, um, the best thing to do is just dig them up and see, and if they're not, go ahead and rebury them. Yeah, but, after the greens yeah. all die off. Yeah, after the greens all die off, uh, what you'll do, you wait for those to, 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 to die off. Now, you, if you're doing it in a bucket, which is easier, if you're doing it in a bucket or a whiskey barrel or something, it's easy because you can just dump it over. Um, usually you plant potatoes in real good loose soil, you just dump it over and it kind of spill out. Um, generally, uh, the first ones will start to be ready maybe October, but you can leave them until November just to be safe. Even if the vines are all dead now? Even if the vines are dead, that doesn't necessarily mean that the potato is going to die or even stop growing. Uh, so it, it's still alive. It, it will actually survive through the winter. Um, yeah, yeah, not too much. Uh, 
Uh, it, the question was, do you keep water in it if it finds a dead? Yes, but uh, not, don't overdo it. Um, you can actually kind of let it go dry. Um, uh, Patty put it this way, she said, if you're leaving them in the soil, it's basically just the same as leaving them in a, what do you call it? A root cellar, yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't hurt them. So it, it, to keep it really low uh, as far as the moisture goes if you're, if you're watering. But otherwise, yeah, they, they actually store for a long time. Uh, you usually have them deep enough that um, they're not really freezing or anything. Um, our ground doesn't freeze that deeply. Mm. Yeah, the pots will actually freeze off. Um, but usually, if you just go ahead and, and harvest your potatoes in November, you'll be doing good. They're generally about the right size. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if you do see, because there'll, there'll be some newer ones forming in there, you'll see some small ones in there. Go ahead and just leave those in there, and um, they'll, they'll start growing again um, in February, March, and, and, and you'll have your next crop. So just leave the small ones in there if you like. Um, I yes. was just going to say that's what I did. I harvested in June and left the little ones in there. And I've got great big old potato plants coming back up right now. Okay, so what she did was she um, went ahead and dug them up in June, took out the big ones, and then the rest of them you just left in there and they grew right back. Yep. So there you go. So it's, it's more, it's, you kind of get into that continuous harvest thing again. Um, with if you really, you know, the commercial growers, they, they do this thing where uh, you know, it can be a little confusing to know where little potatoes got left behind and we'll have, you know, a patchy potato patch. And so it's easier just to dig it all up and start all over again. But if you're not really worried about commercial growing, you can go ahead and just you know, dig them up. Oh, there's some little ones, throw them back in, cover them over with dirt again and start the next season. Easy enough. So, yes. Yes. I'm presuming to grow potatoes in a bucket, you start real close to the bottom and yes. then add dirt as the green yes. comes yes. up? Yes. Yes. Usually, especially when you're growing in a bucket or a pot, you're going to layer like that. You'll put a little bit of dirt in there and uh, put some seed potatoes or put a layer of seed potatoes in there and then more dirt and another layer and you'll just keep doing that. Some people do it in uh, straw and uh, they'll do the same thing. Just layer it up, um, so you can actually get yeah, the, 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 the stems will find their way up. So you can get a, a huge amount of potatoes into you know, one bucket or pot or uh, you know whatever it is you're doing it in. <laughs> in a thirty-gallon garbage can. Yes. Yeah, she's doing hers in a thirty-gallon garbage can. So. There's so many different ways to do this. Uh, just find any kind of containers, uh, punch a hole, put some holes in it so they get good aeration and drainage, and you're ready to go. So, uh, um, any other questions? Yes. Is it too late to plant spinach? No. Uh, you're actually right about on time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did give you guys a garden calendar. It's, what does it say for spinach on there? Okay, um, that's basically, uh, you can keep doing spinach up until, I think it takes about a month for spinach to get to uh, maturity. So you can keep planting right up through September. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be harvesting as soon as possible, then yes, do it July, August. Actually, keep going. And this has been a hot summer, <laughs> so this is kind of one of those ones where it might have been easier to, to go over here. So, yes. Uh, let's see. Basically, if you're, you're going to be planting something, yes? Uh, will basil survive the winter or basil will not survive the winter? Basil and cilantro, neither one will survive the winter. Cilantro is a cool season. Um, uh, herb that will, it, it, in, in the summertime it just bolts, so you can't get anything out of it then. And then uh, in the wintertime it dies from the freeze, so it's strictly spring and fall, but nowhere in between. 
Uh, basil uh, is fine with the heat. Uh, it, here in our arid climate, it, it's not a good idea to have it in direct sun, but it takes the heat pretty well, but it does not like the cold at all. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it does grow well here. Yes, yes. Is that black? Parsley, yes. There's parsley. I'm going to do a curly leaf. Parsley is parental. But um, it um, recedes. And so you'll put it in and you'll still have to be harvesting you know, next year. Um, it has to get really, really cold. It's semi evergreen. It has to get really cold before it actually dies off and goes dormant. So uh, this is something that uh, you'll have on hand all the time. It takes the sun, it takes the heat, it takes the cold. Another one that will do that, oregano. Um, two oreganos here. This one's a new one called the golden oregano. Yeah, real pretty. Kind of gives a splash of color. Uh, sage is another one. These are perennial. Uh, so these never go away. They'll, they'll actually last in the yard all winter and survive the heat in the summer. Drought tolerant, low water user ones. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she was saying that it dies out and comes back in the spring. Yes. Um, if it's a mild winter, it will keep some of its leaves or maybe even most of its leaves. Um, otherwise, it'll just go dormant. And, and these will come back. They'll both go dormant and come back in the spring. Um, when you're planting vegetables, um, basically just look at how long it's going to take for them to mature and, and whether and how cold hardy they are. So, if, for example, if we're going to plant something like spinach or lettuce, uh, these, like the leaf lettuces and the spinaches, they only take about approximately a month to mature. So you can plant them up to a month before the first fall frost. It can sometimes take a light frost, so you, you, do, you can even do it a little bit later than that if you want to. Are you saying by seed or by start? Um, from seed, actually. From start, you've got a head start, so this is halfway there. This is actually uh, ready to uh, harvest. Uh, and even if they're not fully mature, a lot of people like to harvest them early for baby greens. Uh, this we could, which one is this? Is this a large leaf variety? No. This is a, okay. Some of the large leaf spinaches, you know, they, they would get bigger than this. And they're seeing they get real big leaves. Um, but even those, you know, you can still do them early for their baby greens. Yes. Um, how much, okay, when you're harvesting, how much do you take off? You have to flip them all. Uh, you're going to hardly leave anything behind. I mean, you're going to actually come almost out of the soil and maybe leave, in this case, maybe at a, an inch. They'll just keep coming back. They'll keep growing more leaves. Uh, all of your leaf vegetables are like that. So go ahead and just take off. Yeah. Give a crew cut. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's really easy. Like I said, with these cool season vegetables, great for beginners because they're easy. Yes. So, the spinach, sorrel. Oh, sorrel. Yes. Where is the sorrel? Here we go. You don't need to mulch. No. <laughs> this stuff is cold hardy. Why not? But then I said they said. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what she was saying is uh, her sorrel died, but it turned out it was because you, you didn't water in winter. Actually, sorrel will keep its leaves all through winter. The stuff I, I can I can put it out out there in in this little pot, no insulation, no mulch, no nothing. I can put it out there. It'll freeze solid. It'll turn into a soil ice cube, and it'll thaw. It'll just keep going. It won't care. This stuff is cold hardy. So. Um, um, what do you do with French sorrel? Uh, it's got a stronger flavor than some of the other leaves. So it's not something that I like to just, you know, pluck off and eat. That's just me. Um, I like the milder flavors. Um, but they are, they're good to mix in with other greens and salads if, you, if it's a, a flavor that will be strong for you. Uh, some people even use it as an herb. They're good in soups, very popular in soups. Yeah, you can saute them. Saute them with spinach. It's very a lot of uses. Grapes, grapes soup. Yes, they are. Yeah. I'm not, 
I think there's the only thing I wouldn't put in a in a soup or a salad or a saute would be lettuce. I mean, they're all all of them are really versatile. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Can you eat the um string beans? Can you eat the leaves? I'm not sure. That's the first time someone's asked me. I'll have to find out. Yes. Some of these plants actually will live through that, yes. Uh, at the worst, they might get a little frost damage. Uh, it wouldn't kill them. So she was saying when she gets, got five inches of snow last year, you're probably up in the woods. Where's the most of them? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're <coughs> okay. Yeah, uh, some of these varieties, it's like the cabbage family again, you know, those are droppings and kale and all of that. Very cold hardy, the sorrel. Very cold hardy. Like I said, they won't grow, they'll just sit there. But they won't die. Um, the pansies, too. All the pansies, uh, these can freeze absolutely solid. And they don't care. What usually will kill a pansy if the freeze goes on too long, especially if you have, a, say, a pot. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have this, say, in December, January. We'll get a long freeze where. The pots will freeze completely, totally solid, and uh, it'll stay frozen. It won't thaw out during the day, it's not warm enough. So the, the pot stays completely frozen for weeks. And eventually what will happen is because a pansy cannot draw water up from frozen soil, it probably dies of dehydration. And that's what kills it. <laughs> so that's, you know, some of these are like that, and they can freeze completely solid and it doesn't um, Same with the, you know, some of the herbs, and they'll go dormant. Uh, the uh, chards and kale and uh, broccoli especially, and the, the cabbages, you know, they'll just sit there and not do anything, they're not growing, but they're, they're alive, no problem. So yeah, very, very cold hardy. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Uh, thyme is also another one that is uh, cold hardy. Again, this one goes dormant. Strawberries, I've got strawberries up here. You can plant strawberries just about any time of the year. <laughs> she said they're a week. They, almost, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, the strawberries, again, you know, they'll go dormant in the winter when it finally gets real cold, the, the leaves just feel like leaves dying off. And now and then you'll see, you know, we get those warm spells in our winters here. You'll see little leaves coming up sometimes. And it gets cold again, they die back again. No big deal. Um, but they, they are, they're, very cold hardy, and I know um, we're used to thinking of planting those strawberries in February because that's when the roots come out. Um, basically, strawberries um, they make runners in the fall, and then they get collected and they're they're sold. You know, by February they're they're ready to be sold. So that's why you see the roots at that time. Um, actually, you can harvest them any time. Sun, strawberries like sun. This thing will be covered in mildew if you don't put it in the sun. It will just be, that's the only thing that will wreck a strawberry plant is lack of light. Yes. Okay. Nice, hot, bright sun during the afternoon, right? Yes. But again, full sun doesn't necessarily mean from dawn to dusk. Um, so as long as at some point during the day they're getting at least, at least four to six hours of sun, I would say my experience. They need to get that much of sunlight, otherwise they they do. They will they need to be covered in powder and mildew. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my mine are planted in west west facing, okay. so they get the late afternoon sun. Yeah, but, but they're in shade here. throughout, you know, yeah. the rest of the day. Right. The two people here that have strawberries on the west side, so they're getting the hot afternoon sun. They're in the shade the rest of the day, but that hot afternoon sun um, is enough. It gives enough light to get uh, keep them healthy and uh, keep the fungus from taking over and give them enough to, to put a set of size on. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the strawberries, like I said, they, if they're not getting enough light uh, or first afternoon, so it's just brighter. Yes. Yes. 
That's someone who raised a question about uh, what to use for insecticide if you need to. Um, fortunately, like I said, the cool season vegetables don't have as much of a problem, but maybe uh, at this earlier time of the season you might see aphids on some things. Or a cabbage butterfly, or it's actually a moth, but it's called cabbage butterfly often. It's a daytime moth that uh, you can't miss it. It's got white wings, real common. You've probably never even paid any attention to it. I'm sure you've seen it many times. They do specialize in the cabbage family. Um, that's broccoli's, kale's, cabbages, all of them. And uh, what they'll do is that that moth will come along and lay its eggs on the undersides of the leaves, real, real tiny. If you look closely, you'll see some teeny, tiny little yellow eggs on the underside of the leaves. And then they'll hatch out into tiny little green caterpillars that will eventually grow to, oh, well, maybe an inch. They're not huge, like hornworms. Uh, but you'll you usually won't notice them until you start seeing leaves with holes in them. Um, they don't always devastate the plant. I wouldn't say it's, it's one of those devastating kind of things, you know. Um, but if it's a, a something where you plan on harvesting the leaves, they can they can be a bit of a problem. Yeah, uh, they tend to go for the looser leaves, uh, so the broccoli is a bit looser. Um, Cabbages. Uh, you'll even see them on your ornamental cabbages. You see holes in there. So the question is, how much? What to use on these, right? What's the difference between both? Okay, so I've got two up here, and these are the two that we sell the most for this purpose. Um, this one is called Captain Jack's. The main uh, active ingredient is called spinosad. Looks like spinosad when you look at the way it's uh, spelled. S p i n o s a d. Um, this one, uh, you spray on the uh, plant, and then when a caterpillar or a beetle or any kind of leaf muncher comes along and tries to eat the leaves with this on it, it'll ingest the Captain Jacks, and that's what takes care of that. This is really useful for when you're not sure where the insect is hiding, and so this way you just put on a preventative measure. Um, the, this one here, uh, called Home Harvest. This is a uh, Waters Brown Home Harvest. Uh, this one is neem oil, N E E M. Some of you might be familiar with that. It's got a lot of different uses. Some, uh, I think, uh, the health food store down the street sells things containing neem for health purposes. Um, they also sell it for, uh, a mosquito repellent that contains it. You can put on your skin. It's a very safe stuff to be putting on your vegetables. Uh, both of these are, are organic. But uh, uh, this one is uh, something you spray directly on the insect for the, the best results. So if you can see it, or if you know it's there in front of you, but it's too well camouflaged for you to see it, you can spray it with this. And so this is something you put directly on the insect for best results. And this one is when you, when you know it's hiding and you can't uh, find it to spray it, you go to the Captain Jacks. This is good for anything that is going to digest the surface of the leaf. Where the Captain Jacks is. Uh, if it's something, it will work on aphids. It has a very long list of things that it will work on, but it won't work on aphids because they're suckers. They, they actually pierce the leaf and suck the juices out, so they're not digesting the surface of the leaf where this is present. So they're both, both organic. So if you're having problems with aphids, go with the neem oil. Uh, if you're having uh, caterpillars, the cabbage moth caterpillars, or anything like that, uh, either one of these will work. Um, usually, if you if you have a, a cabbage moth, you pick up your vegetable, whatever it is, and uh, if you look in the nooks and crannies, especially during the heat of the day, um, they'll be down deep inside the leaves, and then they'll come out when it's cooler and then munch on the, um, the outer parts. And so you'll have all these holes in your leaves, but you're not seeing the caterpillar. Yes? What is the shelf? What is a shelf life? I'm not aware of an expiration date on them. Um, I mean, I suppose if you have one for many years, is my question is, but um, realistically, you're not going to have to worry about it. Yeah, they don't really seem to lose their potency. Um, the one is in, uh, it's actually the oil extract from uh, the neem tree in India. And then this one is, uh, spinosad is actually the, um, 
by, it's a natural byproduct of the bacteria. The bacteria produces this ingredient. And uh, it's a bacteria that occurs only in Bermuda, I think, or somewhere in the Caribbean. Um, somewhere over there. <laughs> if you look inside the label, I think it's actually done with the history there. You can look it up online. 